Our new series entitled Truth Be Told. We started last week. In fact, for eight weeks, we're going to talk about this. All of this about the parables of Jesus. Talking about uh, last week, talk about the parable of the sower. And today, we're going to talk about the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast. Um, eight parables. And say, wow, parables of all the stories of Jesus. Parables. What's that? Now, parables are important because it uh, gives significant meaning. It has a, gr a grain of, uh, of truth in it that we need to listen to it, that it will impact our life, our generation, and the next generation. And knows what? All of those generations following you once you appropriate the truth of God. So it's very important for us. Are you ready to listen to the Word of God? Yes. Okay, last week again, I talk, talk, talk about the power of the sower Learn about four kinds of responses when we hear the gospel. What are those? You still remember that? The first response is, is along the path. Okay, you don't, you, there's, there's un, unbelief. The second is uh, something that's on the rocky soil. The third, the third one is on the thorny soil. And the fourth one is in the good soil. Okay, the call there is to call to hear the gospel, to hear the word of God. So it's important for us to hear the word of God. That was the challenge today. We're going to talk about the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast. So with respect to the word of God, can we all stand up? Let's all read this together in Luke chapter 8, 13, verse 18 and onwards. Let's all read this together. One, two, three, go. Then Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? And what shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his garden it grew and became a tree, and the birds perched in its branches. Again, he asked, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for today. Lord, I pray that you will protect the sanctity of your word, God. Lord, the purity of your word, God. Let me not defile it. I pray, God, would you cleanse our hearts right now, God, so that whatever, whatever will be preached today, Lord, we will hear your word, God, and we will take it. We will seize your word, God. Lord, remove any distractions in this place and let your kingdom come upon this place, God. All of us will hear your word and appropriate it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please take your seat. And today, uh, that is the parable. I'm going to talk about the kingdom of God. Wow, the kingdom of God. What's that? Speaking about the kingdom of God, you may be saying, oh, I missed my important appointments just today just to sit down here and then we're going to talk about the kingdom of God. What's that? It's politics again? I've, I've had, had enough of politics here in the Philippines and I don't know what, what, what to say anymore. I'm going to talk about the kingdom of God. How, how is that important to me right now? How will that apply in my life? Kingdom of God, what's that? You may be saying there's a big question mark in your uh, head right now. But just to um, give you a definition of the kingdom of God, it is the rule of an eternal sovereign God over all the universe. Not just here in our nation. Over all the universe. It is God's right. He has the right to reign. He has the right to take dominion because He owns it. The universe, He owns it. It occurs, the kingdom of God occurs 68 times in 10 different New Testament books. In fact, as I look at it in the book of Luke, around 37 times when Jesus would speak about the kingdom of God and He would act about talking about the kingdom of God, around 37 times the kingdom of God is mentioned. Okay? It's mentioned there. So, we're going to learn about this. I'm going to give you three thoughts about the kingdom of God. First is, it's His work. Second is, it will work. And then third is, it's at work. So the first one, let's talk about this. The kingdom of God, it's His 
worth. In verse 18, then Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? Now, before we go to that question, let's answer, what is the kingdom of God like? Okay? Ano ba yung kingdom of God? It's so obvious there. It's God's kingdom. It's not yours. Okay? Meaning, it's not your timeline. It's not based on your power. It's not based on your capacity. It's not based on your capability. Maybe you're limiting yourself right now. I cannot do this. There's struggle. You know, there's impossibilities. Guess what? It's his work. It's his kingdom. It's the kingdom of God. In fact, before, uh, before he, he started his ministry, in Luke chapter 1, verse 32 to 33, when an angel uh, revealed himself to Mary and said that he will bore a son, his name is Jesus, he said here, he will be great and will be called the son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of, of his father David. The kingdom of God is already working beforehand. It's already working beforehand. Israel had a theocracy before. Their God is their king. But then they got uh, envious with other nations. They want to have a king. So they had Saul being a king and David there were a few great kings and some good kings, but there were a lot of bad kings. Okay? Now, this is the fulfillment of the promise of God in Isaiah. There will be a king who will reign. It's Jesus. And it says here, in his kingdom, there will be no end. Talking about Jesus. Psalms 100 said, in 100 said that, his kingdom endures from generations to generation. So that's the kingdom of God. And the moment Jesus started his ministry, in Luke chapter 4, he started promoting the kingdom of God. He was preaching the kingdom of God. People wanted to stop him. Stay here. But Jesus said, no, I need to go out to towns and villages. I need to preach the kingdom of God. In Luke 5, he even said there are famous Beatitudes, blessed are the poor. For theirs is the, the kingdom of God. In fact, in Luke chapter 7, he talked about John the Baptist saying that there's no other greater man than John, John the Baptist. But it's a kind of par paradox where he said that those who are least in the kingdom of God will be greater than he. He's not saying that John is the greatest man, but he was saying that John was in a unique position because as a prophet, he gets to have a personal personal encounter with Jesus because all of the prophets before, they were just writing it. Looking forward, there will be a king. And here's John the Baptist, face to face with a king. Wow, can you imagine that? If you're alive at that time, that was a unique position for John the Baptist. But Jesus said, those who are least in the kingdom of God will be greater than he. I was saying, why? Because John the Baptist died before Jesus was crucified. And now, Jesus was practically saying, as Christians now, we have a unique position as well. That we can look at Jesus and say, wow, he conquered sin and death. This king came not to rule like what, we, what the Pharisees thought about. He's going to put a literal kingdom, a physical kingdom, but it's a way to redeem us. Redeem mankind to atone for our sins. Wow. So he's talking about the kingdom of God. And then, he said the disciples to proclaim the kingdom of God in chapter 9. He was already sending them. Go, go, proclaim the kingdom of God and heal. With the kingdom of God comes miracles, signs, and wonders, and proclaiming of the good news. That was the kingdom of God. And can you imagine it? Wow. Jesus is actually promoting now the kingdom of God. He was saying that I will die. I will, I will die, but those who would follow me would deny themselves. And again, he was speaking about the kingdom of God. People say, I, would I will follow you, but let me first bury the dead. Uh, let me first bur bury my father. He's dead. He died. And he said, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Again, he's talking about the kingdom of God. Said, one said, no, let me, let me please go back to my family and bid goodbye to them. You said, no one who goes uh, to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. He was basically... Throwing in, promoting the kingdom of God. It's his work. It's there. He's alive. He's a literal king. That's why he's saying the kingdom is in here because he's alive. Okay. And then uh, in Luke 10, 
People ask, how, can, how do we pray? You said, this is how to pray. Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God. When he was healing a uh, demon-possessed guy, pe people, Pharisees were saying, ah, it's just with the, with the spirit of Beelzebul that you, will, you are doing these things. And Jesus talked about the kingdom. The kingdom cannot be divided. But here's the kingdom of God. is stronger than Satan, and I'm here. He was talking about the kingdom of God. And then Luke chapter 12, he was saying, if you seek first the, the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, this is God's work. It's not your work. It's his kingdom. It was, uh, people missed it because they thought, oh, Jesus is going to come and then they will topple down the Roman government and he will be a king. But no, he, became, he came as a king to serve. To serve mankind. To save us. And then, it, it's actually, the kingdom of God is actually partly present and partly future. Why? Because he came to serve, but later on, when he will come back, it will be, the king who will be all the power and dominion, the king of glory. All nations will bow down before him. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow down in heaven and under heaven. They will all bow down. This is the kingdom of God. It's so powerful, right? All nations. It's so powerful. But guess what? It's not just his work. It will work. It will work also. And he then compared the kingdom to this, like a mustard seed. In fact, the other uh, accounts in Matthew said it's the small, smallest of all seed. Can you imagine how insignificant that is? If you, you are a businessman, if you are a, a, an actor, if you are a, a, uh, throw, throwing in something to, for people to buy, wouldn't you want it to be impressive for all people? You can see, see that in commercials. They want it to be impressive, but here's God, the most important kingdom of all, giving us a promotion. And it's so insignificant, unimpressive, that you would yawn at it. You would say, it does not have an appeal to me. That's the first impression. But I hope your, that first impression won't last. And I hope that you'll begin to understand that this kingdom of God, though it's insignificant, it will grow and grow and grow and it will work. Just like what Jesus said, it grew, became a tree. It grew. John the Baptist almost missed this because while he was in prison, he was saying to his disciples, can you go back and tell him, are you the one who is to come or the one should we expect another one? That's why we need to understand this because we have our own perspectives about the kingdom of God. Pilate missed it. He thought, are you a king? And you said, if I am, I'm a king here on earth, my kingdom is not like the kingdom of here on earth because I am a, a king here on earth, God would send his angels. Pilate missed it. The disciples missed it. Peter missed it. He said that you are, you are Savior, Messiah. And you said, I would die. No! <laughs> I thought that you're going to rule Israel. Almost miss this because it's so insignificant. It's kind of like us right now. When you receive the word of God and you felt you look at your situation, ah, the kingdom of God this is really happening. In your household, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Ah, there's quarreling, there's lots of uh, dysfunctions. It's, it's the kingdom of God here. I'm about to quit. It's, it's this Christianity. Guess what? I'm telling you right now, because it's his work, because it's his kingdom, it will work. It will work. It says here, it grew and became a tree, and the birds perched in its branches, growing up and becoming a tree, and its birds perched in its branches. This is how the kingdom of God works. So to give us a bit of a, a game so that we can understand what this is, I'm going to give you a, uh, a picture here, and you will tell me, uh, how that company started, if it's the company like, uh, tell me, guess what company this is, okay? Uh, let's start. This one, what company do you think started that in that place? Apple. Apple. Wow. Very good. Galeng. Apple. How about this one? Like a place for the horse. <laughs> huh? I, 
Microsoft, closer. Walt Disney. Great things come from small beginnings, like Milo. Okay. Now this one, try to guess this. This is very hard, okay? You need to guess this one. <laughs> it's there. It's Google. You know what? Same with our church. We started in Tandem Cinema, 1984 in Recto. You may be saying right now, oh, Victory Church is so uh, rich. We have a nice building. But we started out in Recto with a small place, underground, almost underground, with a uh, sewerage. You can smell funny things there. Started with Pastor Steve Merle, preach the gospel. The kingdom of God is growing. The kingdom of God is growing. The kingdom of God is growing. And by the grace of God, we have this building. By the kingdom of God, we have this building. We can sit here and say, oh, I, I don't want to go there. It's so uh, intimidating. That's the history of our church. That's the kingdom of God. It's not the kingdom of victory. That works. It's the kingdom of God. Victory is just part of the kingdom. So if you are here right now and you are saying, I have just a small church there, go back to the church if God has called you to that church. Because God will do something amazing. If you're just saying, I'm just called to go to the uh, street children, street boys, okay, <laughs> street kids, I I'm just here to go back to where God has called you. It will grow. You don't need to be a full time minister. If God has called you to, do, to the, your offices, to your schools, go back there because the kingdom of God will grow. It will work. Like Victory Church, we've grown to around 75,000 here in Metro Manila with 13 locations. To the provinces, we've grown to 45,000 with 70, 77 provincial churches. And also just what you watch in a recap, we've grown to 18 nations. Can you imagine the privilege of working with God. The kingdom of God is growing. It is growing. Don't despise small beginnings. No, <clears throat> we are confident it will work because it's His work. That's why it will work. And then also, last, lastly, it's, it's at work. Verse 20, again He asked, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed the other verse in ESV says there, hid. He, she hid it into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Until it worked all through the dough. You cannot see it with the first, it's, it's visible. Okay, at first, on the onset, it's kind of invisible. But when it's growing, you can see it, right? Say with us, the first time you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you are not perfect. Right? Is it just me? <laughs> I'm talking to the wrong crowd. You are all not perfect. There's something that needs to change in us. But after years, when you look back and say, oh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. After 10 years, before I used to curse from Alpha to Omega, from A to Z, I used to curse. But now you have changed my heart. Wow, thank you, God. You can see the changes, right? Yes. You're thankful to God because you've seen it, how you've grown. It's God saying to you, I, it's, it's, a, it's, it's working. It's working. But also with this one, it's at work because even if you can, it's not visible to your naked eye, God is working. The kingdom of God is working. You just need to, to uh, uh, wait for it. There's time. There's processes in it. It takes time, but when? It is there, the process, it's irreversible. It will happen. It will happen. It's at work. Here's this guy. His name is Christian Kayabyab. Got engaged, got reached out in Endoran by one of our campus ministers. Then, on that day, he surrendered his life to Christ. Then he became also a leader to reach out to his sister, and then his sister got discipled, also surrendered her life to Christ. Now her sister is doing one-to-one -to, -one to someone. Can you imagine the progress of the kingdom of God? It's working. It's working in the family, 
is an encouragement to us. Whatever we're praying for, Lord, I don't think so. My dad will change God. Haba na ng sunga eh. Tigas na. Lord, will this, can you just, Lord, give me a miracle? You know what? Just like maybe God is telling you, why don't you serve him? Just like me, I'm a king. I choose to serve. Why don't you go out there and serve your dad? God and his kingdom, it will work. And even if you don't see it, it's at work. And this guy had an opportunity to preach, co-preach the gospel to a small community. And the parents don't like it. Parents said, no way, you're not going to go there. But then after days of praying, the parents said, mm, okay, this is what we will do. We'll let you go there, but we will drive. We'll be the ones driving you going there. Little did they know that it was a setup for them. <laughs> because when Christian preach, preached the gospel and spoke about his testimony, they were crying and they also received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Can you imagine that? Wow, that's the kingdom of God. It's so powerful. It may seem insignificant though, but I pray that we will stay with that kingdom. We will stay with that kingdom. We will not be uh, deceived by the instant kind of kingdom that's saying, I'm going to give you wealth. I'm going to give you pleasures right now. Get out of Christianity. Sabihin ng mga kaibigan sa'yo, your friends will tell you, Ooh, Christianity is just a season. Go back. Go back to Christianity there, but you will... All Three months, I'll give you three months. You'll be with us, you'll be drinking with us. They would say that, they would say words, discouraging words to you. In fact, when you're a Christian, they would expect you to be perfect. Can you attest to that? When you make mistakes, whoo, is that a Christian? Is that a Christian? They would say, yes, that's a Christian. <laughs> of course, you are in the process. You are in the process. I like this uh, quote. It was, in fact, uh, it's a long quote that I will just read it to you. It was quoted by C.S. Lewis from George MacDonald. And hear this out. Okay, here's what he said. Imagine yourself as a living house. God comes in to rebuild that house. At first, perhaps you can understand what he's doing. He's getting the drains right and stopping the leaks in the roof and so on. You knew that the jobs needed doing. But presently, he starts knocking the house about in a way that hurts abominably and does not seem to make any sense. What on earth is he up to? The explanation is that he is building quite a different house from the one you thought of. Throwing out new wing here, putting an extra floor there, running up towers, making courtyards. You thought you were being made into a decent little cottage, but he is building a palace and he intends to come and live in it himself. That's the kingdom of God. We are thinking, Lord, I want to change now, but once again, it's his rules. It's not our rules. It's his timeline, not our timeline. But also, it's his capacity, not your capacity. It's his power and dominion, not our power. Adam and Eve try that. They want to be like God. But when they became like God, situations arose Verse chapter 4 maybe, there was a murder and they cannot even stop it because they are just like God. I bought a shoes in Green Hills. It's called Like Jordans. Tried to play it after one, 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 one session, the soul just gave up on me <laughs> because it's just like Jordans. Same with us. We want to be like God. Situations would come. We would say, oh, I can do it. That's why we are so frustrated because we want to be like God. 
God is saying, if you want to let my kingdom come in your life and be the God of your situation, then real change comes. Eternal change comes. That's the power of God. Can we all stand up? I read this somewhere from a book by Bill Hybels. We're talking about the kingdom of God. We're saying kingdoms have uh, come and go. Kingdoms come and go. Lots of kings in the old times. They rose, they fell. How important is the kingdom of God in my life? There's a kingdom of business tycoons. Rose, fell. Greatest teams win championships, fell. Greatest persons succeed in life, also somehow failed. What's the difference of this kingdom of God? Just what I said before. It's His kingdom that will endure from generation to generation to generation to generation. And you read the book of Revelation and it says there that all tribes and tongues will worship God. All nations, they will worship God. That's the kingdom of God. It's already been written. God has already declared it. Jesus came to serve, but He will come again. Us as Christians, we have this hope. Yes, we have given this kingdom as a, is partially present. God has defeated the enemy, Satan. He has uh, conquered sin. He has given us the victory. Yes, and even the sickness, the solution. But even as a Christian, you need to live to that king, live for that kingdom because um, you still have to resist Satan, right? You still have to um, fight sin. You still have to pray over sickness and even endure till you die because we will die. The great thing there is you are secure because your kingdom, the kingdom of God rather, is in us. It's among us. That victory, I believe, proves to be so beautiful for us that we cannot resist it but want to be part in that kingdom of God. Do you want to be part of that kingdom of God? That's the kingdom of God. And Jesus told this to a teacher. His name is Nicodemus. This guy also missed this. And Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's not talking about religion here. It's talking, there's a spiritual thing here. If you are born again, the spirit change, you will see the kingdom of God. Because for us, we were so glad to say success stories, uh, Walt Disney, Google, all of these things, now that they are so successful, wow! But were, were you there when they were working it so hard? They started it. And Jesus started the work. That's why Coach Pastor Brian said that he who began a good work in you will bring it into completion at the day of Jesus Christ. When He will come, whether you believe Him or not, whether a, whether a nation believes Him or not, they will bow down at the name of Jesus because He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Whose kingdom are you in right now? That's my prayer for us. And I want to pray for you. First, kind of people I want to pray. If you are a Christian right now and you there's some things in your heart that you're praying, Lord, can you change this? Can you change this? But God in His wisdom allow those weaknesses to happen so that you can always run to Him. And right now you are so tired. And I believe God wants to tell you, just hold on. Trust me. I'm at work here. And it will work because it's my work. It's my kingdom anyways. Would you raise up your hands and let me pray for you. Father God, you see these hands raised. Whatever struggles, whatever situations or testings, God, maybe personal, Lord, or in the family, maybe it's relational dysfunctions, maybe it's the business, whatever it is, God, right now, let your kingdom come. 
Lord, and I pray, God, would you open our eyes, Lord, the way you opened the eyes of Saul. First, he was spiritually blind, but when he became blind himself, physically, yet in the spiritual, he saw you. But I pray, God, that maybe you are allowing testings to happen. It's like to physically blind them. It's like a, I cannot move anymore because you are opening their eyes to see your kingdom. And let them see, let us see your kingdom, God, at work, Lord God. Thank you, Father. And put down your hands. I want to pray for a group of people here, and you know that Jesus is not your king. Your king is your work. Your king is your family. You know that you don't have any personal relationship with him. I want to pray for you right now. With eyes closed, you raise up your hands. It's a sign of saying, Lord, would you be my king? I want to be part of your kingdom, God. See those hands. Thank you for those hands. You can raise up your hands. It's between you and God. If you're raising up your hands, would you pray this prayer with me? Say, Father God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me. I accept you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. From now on, be the boss, be the master, be the king in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Come on and give God a couple of praise. We just raise up our hands before God as a sign of uh, surrender to Him. Lord, we thank you, God, for this preaching, Lord God. Thank you for this parable, Lord. Thank you that your kingdom will definitely work because it's your power, it's your dominion, it's your work. It will work. And even if we can't see it, it's invisible to our naked eye. It's at work. We thank you, God, that you will complete it. You will finish it, God. And we will be victorious, Lord God. At the end of the day, we look forward, God, to winning with you, Lord God. Today, until the day we die and we meet you, God. We honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all the people say, amen and amen.